The wrought iron gates of Ravenhurst Manor loomed before Samantha Ray, their spikes reaching into the slate-gray sky like accusing fingers. She hadn't set foot on the sprawling estate in over a decade, not since the night her mother died and the chasm between her and her father became an unbridgeable abyss. Now, standing on the rain-slicked gravel drive, the strap of her leather bag digging into her shoulder, she felt the weight of the past bearing down on her. The home call from her stepmother, Vivian, had been unexpected. Unwelcome. Your father is dead, Samantha. Vivian's voice had been hollow, devoid of any real grief. The funeral is on Sunday. I trust you'll do your duty as a daughter and pay your respects. Samantha's grip tightened on the wrought iron, the metal cold and unyielding under her palm. Her father? Dead. The concept seemed incomprehensible, despite their years of estrangement. Edward Ray had always been a force of nature, indomitable, immovable. A mountain of a man, as hard and cold as the New England stone. And now, he was gone. The secrets he'd so fiercely guarded, the unspoken sins that hung in the air of Ravenhurst like a miasma, had been buried with him. Or so Samantha thought. Drawing a fortifying breath, she pushed through the gates, their hinges shrieking in the silence. The house rose before her, a hulking gothic monstrosity of weathered stone and dark shuttered windows. Memories assailed her with every step, her mother's lilting laughter echoing through the halls, the slam of her father's study door, locking her out. And later, hushed arguments behind that same door, her mother's voice pleading, her father's sharp and final. The front door swung open before she could reach for the knocker. Silhouetted in the dim foyer stood a man, tall, broad-shouldered, his features obscured by shadow. For a moment, Samantha's heart stuttered. But no, it couldn't be. Hello, sister. The man stepped into the watery light, and Samantha found herself staring into eyes, the same stormy gray as her own. Eyes she hadn't seen since she was sixteen, on a face that was at once achingly familiar and utterly foreign. Liam she breathed, her voice barely a whisper. Her stepbrother, her once closest confidant, the boy who'd held her while she cried after their parents' shouting matches, who'd bandaged her knees when she fell out of the old oak tree, the man who now regarded her with a cool, inscrutable gaze that sent a shiver down her spine. Welcome home, Samantha, he said flatly. Though I admit I'm surprised you came. Murderers usually avoid returning to the scene of the crime. Samantha stared at him, blood turning to ice in her veins. What are you talking about? Liam's lip curled, a harsh slash in the dimness. Don't play, innocent. We both know you're anything but. He took a step closer, his bulk crowding her. You couldn't just stay away, could you? You couldn't resist the chance to gloat over our father's corpse. Anger sparked in Samantha's chest, hot and bright. I'm here to bury our father, to put the past to rest. Whatever poison you're spouting. Poison? Liam cut her off with a scoff. That's rich, coming from you. Considering you're the one who killed him? The world tilted on its axis. Samantha grabbed the doorframe for support, blood roaring in her ears. I didn't... I would never... Liam leaned in, his breath hot against her cheek. Prove it. Then he was gone, striding off into the shadows of the house, leaving Samantha alone on the threshold, reeling. Her father was dead. Her stepbrother thought she killed him. And somewhere in the dark heart of Ravenhurst Manor, the truth waited. A coiled serpent ready to strike. Samantha stepped over the threshold, into the house of her childhood, of her nightmares, into the tangled web of secrets and lies that had haunted the Rays for generations. She had a feeling in her bones and her blood that this homecoming would be her last. The funeral was a somber affair, the air heavy with the scent of lilies and the weight of unspoken grief. Samantha stood at the edge of the gravesite, the black silk of her dress rippling in the breeze as the casket was lowered into the earth. Beside her, Vivian dabbed at dry eyes with a lace handkerchief, her posture regal despite the circumstances. Samantha's gaze flicked to Liam, standing on Vivian's other side. His jaw was clenched, 
eyes fixed on the casket, a muscle ticking in his cheek. The accusation he had hurled at her the day before still rang in Samantha's ears, as discordant as the tolling of the church bells. Murda. The word tasted bitter on her tongue, foreign and repugnant. As the mourners began to disperse, murmuring condolences, Samantha felt a hand on her elbow. She turned to find herself face to face with Detective Nolan, his weathered features set in a grim expression. Miss Ray, he said, his voice low and grave. I'm sorry for your loss, but I'm afraid I need to ask you some questions. Samantha's heart lodged in her throat. Questions. Nolan glanced around, ensuring they weren't overheard. Your father's death. There are some inconsistencies. Things that don't add up. A chill skittered down Samantha's spine, despite the warm sun overhead. What are you saying, detective? He met her gaze squarely. I'm saying your father's death may not have been from natural causes. The world seemed to tilt, the ground shifting beneath Samantha's feet. She opened her mouth, but no words came. I understand this is a difficult time, Nolan continued, not unkindly. But the sooner we get to the bottom of this, the better. For everyone. Samantha swallowed past the tightness in her throat. Of course. Anything I can do to help. Nolan nodded, his eyes softening a fraction. Thank you. I'll be in touch. As he walked away, melting into the sea of black-clad figures, Samantha felt a prickle of unease. If her father's death wasn't from natural causes, her gaze drifted to Liam, now standing alone at the edge of the grave, hands clasped behind his back. As if sensing her scrutiny, he turned, pinning her with those same stormy gray eyes. Eyes that held accusation and something else. Something darker, more haunted. Samantha looked away first, a shiver racing over her skin despite the heat. She needed answers. Needed to know what really happened to her father, and why Liam seemed so convinced of her guilt. The wake passed in a blur of murmured condolences and picked at Hors Dove. Samantha moved through the crowds on autopilot, her mind whirring until a snippet of hushed conversation caught her attention. Always knew that girl was trouble. Even as a child. It was her great-aunt Millicent, holding court in a corner with a gaggle of pearl-clutching second cousins. Marrying beneath his station, bringing that woman's bastard into the family. Edward should have known better. Anger flashed through Samantha, hot and bright. How dare they speak of her mother that way, of Liam. But before she could storm over, a cool hand grasped her elbow, steering her deftly away. Don't, Vivian murmured, her perfectly painted lips barely moving. It's not worth the scene. Samantha wrenched her arm free, rounding on her stepmother, eyes flashing. Not worth it. They're disparaging my mother's memory. Liam's. How can you just stand there and... And what? Let the rumor mill churn itself into a frenzy? Vivian cut her off, voice sharp as a blade. Use your head, Samantha. With your father's death under investigation, the last thing we need is more grist for the gossip mill. The words hit Samantha like a slap. Under investigation? What do you mean? Vivian's lips thinned. You really don't know, do you? She shook her head, a bitter little laugh escaping. Of course you don't. You've been gone for years, washed your hands of this family and all our sordid little secrets. Vivian, please. Samantha's voice cracked, the anger draining away as quickly as it had come, replaced by a bone-deep weariness. I just want to understand. I want to know the truth. For a long moment, Vivian simply stared at her, inscrutable. Then, with a sigh, she reached into her handbag withdrawing a small, leather-bound journal. She pressed it into Samantha's hands, her fingers cold and bony. Perhaps this will give you the answers you seek, she said, voice uncharacteristically soft. But be warned, Samantha. Some truths are better left buried. With that, she melted back into the crowd, leaving Samantha standing alone, the journal heavy in her hands. Heart pounding, she cracked it open, the musty scent of old paper and long-held secrets wafting up to greet her. It was her father's journal, she realized with a start. His precise, slanting script filled the yellowed pages, dating back decades. 
With trembling fingers, she flipped to the last entry, dated just two days before his death. My sins have finally caught up with me, it read. The truth will out as it always does. God forgive me for what I've done, for the lives I've ruined. Samantha, if you're reading this, know that I never meant to hurt you. I only wanted to protect you from the curse that has plagued this family for generations. But in doing so, I fear I have become the very monster I sought to shield you from. Samantha's breath caught, tears blurring the words. A... Uh, a curse? What was he talking about? Frantic now, she scanned the rest of the entry, her heart slamming against her ribs. It all comes back to that woman, Lucia, with her haunting eyes and her secrets. She started it all, set in motion the gears of our destruction. I should have known better than to succumb to temptation, but I was weak. So weak? And now, we will all pay the price. The journal ended there, the final words trailing off into a macabre smear of ink. But it was the last line, scrawled in a shaking hand, that made Samantha's blood run cold. If you want the truth, look to the portrait. The answer lies with her. Samantha snapped the journal shut, her mind reeling. Lucia. Cal. The portrait. The cryptic warnings of a family curse. It was like something out of one of her own novels, a dark gothic mystery unspooling before her eyes. But this was no fiction. This was her life, her blood legacy. And she would unravel the truth, even if it meant facing the demons of her past, and the shadows lurking in her own family tree. As she slipped from the wake, the journal tucked into her purse, she failed to notice the figure watching her from the study window. Liam tracked her progress across the lawn, the gray light filtering through the ancient panes casting his features into sharp relief. In his hands he cradled a letter, the creamy vellum marred by a single word, scrawled in a familiar damning hand. Murderer, Tyrion. The attic was musty, the air thick with the scent of mothballs and forgotten memories. Samantha sneezed, dust motes dancing in the slant of light from the solitary window. She hadn't set foot in this room since she was a child, playing hide-and-seek with Liam among the draped furniture and stacked portraits. The portraits! Her father's final words echoed in her mind, a taunting refrain. If you want the truth, look to the portrait. The answer lies with her. Her. Day. Lucia. The name that had seemed to haunt her father even in death. Who was she? What secrets did her painted likeness hold? Samantha moved deeper into the attic, her footsteps muffled by the thick layer of dust. Sheets draped the larger furnishings, looming like ghostly sentinels in the gloom. But it was the stack of gilt-framed canvases in the far corner that drew her, an inexorable pull she could no more resist than the tide could resist the moon. With trembling hands, she began to sift through the portraits, each one a window into a forgotten past. Stern-faced ancestors in high collars and lace, faded sepia tones hinting at lives long extinguished. But none of them were the woman she sought, the enigmatic Lucia who seemed to hold the key to her father's cryptic final message. And then near the bottom of the stack, she found her. The portrait was smaller than the others, an intimate oval no bigger than a serving tray. But... It was the woman within the frame that stole Samantha's breath, recognition slamming into her like a physical blow. Dark hair tumbled over bare shoulders in glossy waves, a striking contrast to the alabaster skin and full red lips. But it was the eyes that held Samantha transfixed, a piercing green that seemed to see straight into her soul. Those eyes. She knew those eyes, had seen them staring back at her from her own reflection for nearly three decades. Lucia. The name fell from her lips, a reverent whisper. This was her mother. Not the one, sickly creature, Samantha remembered from her final years, wasted away by grief and secret sorrow. But, vibrant, alive, a true portrait of the woman Sasha Delacroix had been, before fate and Edward Ray had snuffed out her light. A creak on the stairs broke the spell, sending Samantha spinning around, the portrait clutched to her chest. Liam stood in the doorway, his imposing frame filling the narrow space, his expression as fathomless as ever. I thought I might find you here. His voice was quiet, 
but it carried in the hushed stillness of the attic. Samantha swallowed, her heart racing. Liam, dot. I was just looking for answers. In all the dark corners and forgotten places. He stepped into the room, the floorboards groaning under his weight. Find anything interesting? There was an edge to the question, a razor beneath the silk. Samantha's fingers tightened on the frame, the guilt biting into her palm. I found my mother, she said softly. Or at least, a piece of her. Liam's gaze flicked to the portrait. Something unreadable flickering in those gray depths. Ah, yes. The lovely Lucia. Dad's dirty little secret. Samantha flinched at the crudeness, the callousness. Don't talk about her like that. Liam arched a brow, moving closer. Why not? It's the truth, isn't it? Dear old dad, paragon of virtue, seduced by the sultry foreign beauty. Knocking her up and then tossing her aside like yesterday's news. Anger sparked in Samantha's chest, bright and hot. You don't know that. You don't know anything about it. Don't I? Liam was close now, close enough for Samantha to see the lines of strain around his eyes, the tick in his jaw. I know more than you think, little sister. I know the real reason Dad kept you at arm's length all those years. Why he could barely stand to look at you. Samantha's heart seized, a sick sense of foreboding unfurling in her gut. What are you talking about? Liam smiled, a bleak, bitter thing. You really don't see it, do you? The resemblance. He nodded to the portrait, to Lucia's haunting green eyes. Eyes that Samantha saw in the mirror every day. Every time Dad looked at you, he saw her. Saw his shame, his weakness. The walking, talking proof of his infidelity. Liam's voice dropped, soft and cruel. You were never his daughter, Samantha. You were his penance. The words hit like a punch to the solar plexus, driving the air from Samantha's lungs. She staggered back a step, the portrait slipping from numb fingers. It hit the floor with a dull clatter, Lucia's accusatory gaze staring up from the dust. No, Samantha whispered, shaking her head. No, that's not true. It can't be. But even as the denial left her lips, the pieces were falling into sickening place. The distance, the coldness, the way her father had always seemed to look through her rather than at her. As if she were a ghost, a specter of his own guilty conscience. Liam closed the distance between them, his bulk crowding her, suffocating. Search your feelings, Samantha. You know it to be true. His hand came up, fingers grazing her cheek in a perverse echo of a caress. Samantha flinched away, bile rising in her throat. Don't touch me, she hissed, anger and revulsion and a terrible aching hurt warring for dominance in her chest. Don't you dare. Liam's eyes glittered, something dark and hungry in their depths. Ah, there she is. The real Samantha. Not the meek little mouse pretending to play detective. He leaned in, his breath hot against her ear. Do you know what I think, sister mine? I think you knew, on some level. I think a part of you has always known the truth about our father. About yourself. Samantha shoved at his chest, panic clawing at her throat. But Liam was immovable, a mountain of flesh and bone and cruel, twisted secrets. I think you killed him, he breathed, the words a silken poison. I think you looked into his eyes and saw the truth reflected back, and something inside you snapped. The world tilted, horror and denial, and a terrible creeping doubt churning in Samantha's gut. No, she whispered, the word a broken plea. I didn't. I would never. Liam's lips curved, a serpent's smile. Wouldn't you? To finally make him pay for all of the years of neglect, of coldness. To make him suffer as he made your mother suffer? His fingers dug into her arms, bruising, branding. I'm the only one who understands, Samantha. The only one who knows the darkness inside you, because it's inside me, too. His mouth crashed down on hers hot and demanding, stealing her breath, her reason. For a moment, Samantha was lost, drowning in sensation, in the twisted tangle of love and hate, 
and a need so profound it bordered on pain. Then, like a splash of cold water, clarity. This was wrong, a sickness, a perversion of everything she knew to be true. She bit down hard on Liam's lip, tasting blood, and shoved him away with all her strength. He stumbled back, eyes wide, a trickle of crimson staining his chin. You're sick, Samantha spat, wiping her mouth with the back of her hand. Sick and twisted and I will never, never be like you. Liam laughed, a harsh, ugly sound. Oh, but you already are, sweet sister. More than you know. He touched his bleeding lip, his eyes never leaving hers. The portrait isn't the only secret dear old dad was keeping. And when you uncover the truth, you'll come running to me. Because I'm the only one who will understand. The only one who will accept you for the monster you truly are. With that, he turned on his heel and stalked from the attic, leaving Samantha alone in the swirling dust, her mother's face staring up at her in mute accusation. Samantha sank to her knees, a dry sob ripping from her throat. Liam's poison dripped into her veins, insidious, corrosive. Was he right? Was the capacity for murder, for darkness, lurking inside her all along? She thought of her father, cold and still in his casket. Of the journal clutched in her purse, taunting her with its cryptic secrets. Of Lucia, the mother she had never truly known, the legacy of pain and betrayal she had unwittingly inherited. The truth was close, she could feel it. A noose, tightening around her neck with every breath. But she had to know. Had to unravel the tangled web of secrets and lies that had strangled her family for generations. Even if the truth destroyed her in the process. With shaking hands, Samantha gathered up the portrait, clutching it to her chest like a talisman. She would find the answers, whatever the cost. For her mother. For herself. And God help anyone who stood in her way. The library was dark, the only illumination the soft glow of the desk lamp and the occasional flash of lightning beyond the tall windows. Rain lashed the panes, the storm outside a fitting backdrop to the tempest raging in Samantha's mind. She sat hunched over her father's desk, the journal open before her, Lucia's portrait propped against the antique lamp. Hours had passed since her confrontation with Liam in the attic, hours spent poring over the cryptic entries, searching for a clue, a hint, anything to guide her towards the truth. But the words seemed to swim before her eyes, taunting her with their obscurity. Passages about regret, about secrets that could shatter lives, about a love that consumed and destroyed in equal measure. But nothing concrete, nothing to confirm or deny Liam's vicious accusations. Samantha rubbed her eyes, exhaustion and frustration burning behind her lids. Lucia's gaze seemed to bore into her, a silent reproach. Mocking her efforts, her naive belief that the truth could ever be simple, ever be kind. A soft knock at the door startled her out of her dark reverie. Samantha's head snapped up, heart pounding, half expecting Liam's dark figure to be lounging against the jam. Come in she called, her voice husky with weariness and strain. The door swung open, revealing not Liam, but Vivian. Her stepmother looked uncharacteristically subdued, her usually immaculate hair falling in soft waves around her face, her silk dressing gown belted tightly around her slender waist. She hovered on the threshold, something uncertain in her bearing, a vulnerability Samantha had never seen before. Can I come in? Vivian asked softly, her gaze flicking to the journal, to Lucia's portrait. Samantha hesitated for a heartbeat, then nodded, gesturing to the empty chair across from her. Vivian closed the door quietly behind her and crossed the room, sinking into the proffered seat with an uncharacteristic lack of grace. For a long moment, neither woman spoke, the only sound the muffled patter of rain against the windows, the occasional rumble of distant thunder. I loved your father. Vivian said at last, her voice barely above a whisper. Despite everything, Samantha looked up sharply, something like anger sparking in her chest. How dare she speak of love when she had stood by and watched as Edward Ray systematically destroyed every shred of happiness, of light, in their lives? But the retort died on her lips as she caught sight of Vivian's expression. Raw, haunted, 
a woman teetering on the edge of some dark abyss. He wasn't always the way you remember him, Vivian continued, her gaze distant, fixed on some point beyond Samantha's shoulder. When we first met, he was charming. Attentive. He made me feel like I was the center of his world. She smiled, a bleak, bitter thing. I was young, naive. I thought I could fix him, could fill the void Lucia's death had left in his heart. A mirthless chuckle. I was a fool. Samantha swallowed past the tightness in her throat, sudden understanding blooming in her chest. How many times had she seen that same look in the mirror? That desperate, futile hope that if she just loved hard enough, if she just gave enough of herself, she could change the unchangeable, heal the unhealable? Vivian, she whispered, reaching across the desk, tentatively covering her stepmother's hand with her own. I'm... I'm... I'm so sorry. Vivian's eyes snapped to hers, surprise and something like gratitude flickering in their depths. She turned her hand palm up, squeezing Samantha's fingers gently. I'm the one who should apologize, she murmured, her voice thick with unshed tears. I should have protected you, should have been the mother you needed. Instead, I let my own pain, my own weakness, blind me to yours. Samantha's heart clenched, a wave of emotion threatening to engulf her. For so long, she had resented Vivian, had seen her as an interloper, a usurper of her mother's place. But now, looking into those haunted blue eyes, she saw only another woman shattered by Edward Ray's legacy of secrets and lies. Liam. Samantha started, then faltered, unsure how to put the twisted tangle of her thoughts into words. He said some things. About dad. Add me. Vivian's lips thinned, a flash of something like anger sparking in her gaze. Liam is, ah, uh, troubled. He always has been. The darkness in him, the violence. It frightened your father. Frightened me. She took a shuddering breath, her fingers tightening around Samantha's. But he's not entirely wrong about your father's secrets. Samantha's breath caught, her heart stuttering in her chest. What do you mean? Vivian closed her eyes, as if gathering her strength. When she opened them again, they were bright with unshed tears, but clear, determined. Your father, he was not a faithful man. Lucia was not his only indiscretion. The words hit Samantha like a blow, stealing her breath, her reason. She had known on some level, had seen the truth in Liam's cruel taunts. But to hear it confirmed, laid bare in Vivian's quiet, broken voice. There were others? She whispered, feeling suddenly very small, very lost. Vivian nodded, a single tear escaping to track down her pale cheek. Many others. Over the years, women he would become obsessed with, consumed by. He would disappear for days, weeks at a time, lost in his infatuations. And then, when the novelty wore off, when they inevitably disappointed him, he would cast them aside. Like so much refuse. Samantha's stomach churned, revulsion and a terrible, aching pity warring in her gut. Pity for those nameless, faceless women. For Lucia, bright and beautiful and ultimately broken. For Vivian, trapped in a loveless marriage, forever paying for the sin of loving a man incapable of love. And Samantha swallowed hard, feeling the truth, the confession, rising like bile in her throat. And me? Am I? Was I? She couldn't finish the thought, couldn't give voice to the terrible suspicion that had taken root in her heart the moment Liam's poison dripped into her veins. Vivian's eyes widened, her pale lips parting in shock. Oh, Samantha. No? No, my darling girl, you are not. She moved then, rounding the desk in a rustle of silk, pulling Samantha into her arms as she had not done since she was a little girl. Samantha stiffened for a moment, then melted into the embrace, tears falling hot and fast against Vivian's shoulder. You are Sasha's daughter, Vivian murmured, stroking Samantha's hair with a tenderness that made her want to weep anew. I promise you that. Whatever else your father was, whatever sins he committed, 
your birth was not one of them. Samantha clung to her stepmother, to the comfort of her words, her touch. But even as relief, sweet and sharp, flooded her veins, the questions remained. The doubts, the mysteries, the secrets that seemed to multiply with every revelation. Lucia's portrait, she mumbled against Vivian's shoulder, pulling back to swipe at her tears. Dad's journal. He wrote that the answer was in the portrait. But I don't... I don't understand. What answer? What was he trying to tell me? Vivian frowned, her gaze flicking to the portrait. For a moment, she seemed lost in thought, chasing some elusive memory. Then, slowly, comprehension dawned. The locket, she breathed, her eyes widening. Samantha, the locket Lucia is wearing in the portrait. Do you see it? Samantha turned, squinting at the small oval frame. There, nestled in the hollow of Lucia's throat, was a delicate silver locket, barely visible against her pale skin. A locket she had seen before, clasped around another throat. Her mother's. Sasha had worn that locket every day of Samantha's childhood, the silver worn smooth by the constant caress of her fingers. It had disappeared after her death, lost among Edward's things. Samantha had always assumed he had taken it, squirreled it away as a hidden token of his shame, his guilt. She never took it off, Samantha murmured, her voice distant to her own ears. Not even to sleep. I used to ask her what was inside, but she would just smile and say it was a secret. That she'd tell me when I was older. Vivian sucked in a sharp breath. Samantha, I think I know where it is. She was moving before Samantha could respond, crossing to the bookshelf that lined the far wall. Her fingers skimmed over the spines, searching, until they came to rest on a thick volume bound in green Morocco. Gently, almost reverently, she pulled it from the shelf. Edward's favorite book, she said softly, running her fingers over the gilt lettering on the cover. La Vita Nuova. The New Life. Dante's ode to his great love, Beatrice. She opened the book, the old leather creaking. There, nestled in a carefully cut hollow in the pages, was the locket. Samantha's heart leapt into her throat, her fingers trembling as she reached for it. The silver was cool against her palm, the delicate filigree as achingly familiar as her mother's face. With shaking hands, she worked the tiny clasp. The locket sprang open, revealing not the expected photographs, but a tightly folded scrap of paper. Hardly daring to breathe, Samantha unfolded it, the parchment crackling with age. There, scrawled in an elegant, unfamiliar hand, were three words. Find the child. Samantha looked up, meeting Vivian's eyes over the desk. In their depths, she saw her own confusion, her own dawning horror reflected back. What child? She whispered. Thunder cracked overhead, the sound as deafening as a gunshot in the tense silence. Lightning forked across the sky, throwing the library into stark relief, all harsh shadows and blood-bright flashes. And in that moment, staring down at that cryptic message, the final piece of a sinister puzzle clicking into place, Samantha felt the icy fingers of fate close around her heart. For she knew with sudden terrifying certainty that the secrets buried with her father, the twisted roots of the Blackthorn legacy, ran far deeper, far darker than she had ever dared to imagine. And she was now walking a path from which there could be no return, no salvation, only damnation, and the terrible, inescapable truth. The graveyard was shrouded in mist, the headstones looming like silent sentinels in the pre-dawn gloom. Samantha picked her way carefully between the plots, the damp grass seeping into her shoes, chilling her to the bone. Or perhaps it was the knowledge of what she was about to do, the terrible truth she was about to unearth, that sent shivers skittering down her spine. Find the child. The words had echoed in her mind like a drumbeat, a mocking refrain, ever since that stormy night in the library. She and Vivian had searched frantically for any clue, any hint to the meaning behind that cryptic message. They'd combed through Edward's papers, his journals, even his private correspondence, searching for any mention of a child, a baby, anything that might shed light on Lucia's final desperate plea. But there had been nothing. 
nothing but dead ends and deepening despair. Until last night. Samantha's fingers tightened around the shovel in her hands, the rough wood biting into her palms. She could still see Liam's face, twisted in a sneer, his eyes glittering with malice as he cornered her in the darkened hallway. Still searching for Daddy's secrets, little sister? He taunted, his breath hot and fetid against her cheek. Still trying to unravel the mystery of the saintly Lucia? Samantha had recoiled, fear and revulsion coiling in her gut. But, beneath it, a flicker of something else. Something like recognition. You know something, she'd whispered, the words tasting like ash on her tongue. You've known all along, haven't you? Liam had laughed, a harsh, ugly sound. Uh, of course I know. Dear old dad could never keep a secret from his beloved son. He'd leaned in closer, his lips brushing her ear. But the real question is, I'll... Do you want to know? Do you want to see just how deep the rot goes? And God help her, she did. Even as every instinct screamed at her to run, to flee this cursed place and never look back, she knew she could not rest until she held the truth, no matter how terrible, in her hands. Tell me, she'd breathed, hating the pleading note in her voice, the desperation. Please, Liam. I have to know. He'd smiled then, a slow, cruel thing. The answer you seek, he'd murmured, lies with her. With Lucia. I. In the place where she took her final rest. And so, here she was. Standing over the grave of a woman long dead. A woman whose secrets had haunted her family for generations. Stealing herself, Samantha plunged the shovel into the earth. The dull thud echoing through the silent cemetery. She dug with a fervor bordering on madness, her muscles screaming, her lungs burning with the effort. But she did not stop, could not stop, even as the sky above her began to lighten, the first tendrils of dawn creeping over the horizon. And then, with a final wrenching heave, the shovel struck something solid. Something that was not earth or stone. Something that felt sickeningly, dreadfully like bone. Samantha fell to her knees, scrabbling in the dirt with her bare hands. And there, nestled in the soil like a macabre treasure, was a small wooden box. A child's coffin. A sob tore from Samantha's throat. A sound of horror and grief, and a terrible dawning understanding. With shaking fingers she pried open the lid, the rotted wood crumbling beneath her touch. Inside, swaddled in a moldering christening gown, lay the skeleton of an infant. A baby girl, if the delicate bone structure was any indication. And there, clutched in the tiny fleshless fist, was a scrap of paper, yellowed and brittle with age. Samantha lifted it with trembling hands, the words swimming before her eyes, blurred by tears she could no longer hold back. My darling Lila, the note read, the ink faded but still legible. Forgive me. Forgive me for not being strong enough, for not fighting harder for you, for letting him take you from me, bury you in the dark earth, as if you had never been. A harsh, wrenching sob. He said it was for the best. That a bastard child would ruin us, destroy the life we had built. But how could any life be worth living without you? My sweet girl, my little angel, I will be with you soon. Wait for me. Da. Mama. E. And it was signed, in a hand Samantha would know anywhere, the looping was familiar to her as her own heartbeat, Lucia. The world tilted, a roaring in her ears drowning out the birdsong, the distant rumble of thunder on the horizon. Lucia's child. Edward's child. A baby girl, ripped from her mother's arms and buried in an unmarked grave, as if she had never drawn breath. And Samantha understood with a clarity that was blinding, excruciating. Understood the darkness that had consumed her father, the guilt that had driven him to push away all who loved him. Understood the madness that had claimed Lucia, the despair that had driven her to take her own life. For what greater sin could there be than to bury your own child? What greater darkness could eclipse the soul? Oh, Dad, Samantha whispered, the words tearing at her throat like shards of glass. What did you do? 
What did you become? Only what he had to. The voice cut through the fog of grief and horror like a knife, startling Samantha so badly she nearly toppled into the open grave. She spun, heart in her throat, to see Vivian standing at the edge of the cemetery, a dark silhouette against the rosy dawn. Vivian, she choked out, struggling to her feet, the tiny skeleton cradled against her chest. What? How? Her stepmother moved closer, her face a mask of sorrow in the gray light. He couldn't let her live, she murmured, her voice thick with unshed tears. An illegitimate child would have ruined him, destroyed everything he had worked for. And your father could not bear to be destroyed. She reached out, her fingers ghosting over the christening gown, the delicate skull. He killed her, she whispered, smothered her in her crib, like some monstrous cuckoo chick. And then he buried her, here, in the dark, where no one would ever find her, where no one would ever know his shame. Samantha stared at her stepmother, her mind reeling. You knew, she breathed. All this time, you knew what he had done. Vivian closed her eyes, a single tear tracing a path down her pale cheek. I suspected, she murmured. I saw the way he looked at you, sometimes. The way he flinched from your touch as if it burned him. As if, every time he saw your face, he saw the ghost of the child he had murdered. She opened her eyes, meeting Samantha's gaze with a look of such raw, aching grief. It stole her breath. I wanted to protect you, she whispered. To shield you from the poison that ran in your father's veins, the darkness that consumed him. I thought, if I could just love you enough, if I could just be the mother you needed. Her voice broke, a sob wrenching from her throat. But I failed you, Samantha. Just as I failed, Lucia Tidy. Just as I failed that poor, innocent babe, snuffed out before she even had a chance to live. Samantha shook her head tears coursing down her own cheeks. No, she said fiercely, clutching Vivian's hand with her free one. No, you didn't fail anyone. You survived. You endured. You did what you had to do, to protect yourself, to protect me. She looked down at the tiny bundle in her arms, grief and love, and a fierce, protective anger welling up inside her. We all did what we had to do, to survive the monsters our fathers made us. Vivian's eyes widened at that, her lips parting in a silent question. But, before she could give voice to it, a sound split the stillness of the graveyard. A sound that sent ice water cascading through Samantha's veins. The click of a pistol being cocked. Now, isn't this touching? Liam's voice, cold and mocking, cut through the fog of grief like a razor. Samantha spun, her heart in her throat, to see him standing at the foot of Lucia's grave, a revolver glinting in his hand. Liam, she breathed, terror and a strange resigned calm warring in her chest. What are you doing? He smiled, a bleak, terrible thing. What I should have done a long time ago, little sister. What dear old dad was too weak to do himself. He raised the gun, pointing it squarely at Samantha's chest. At the child cradled in her arms. I'm ending this, he said softly. The black thorn curse. The poison in our blood. I'm going to bury it once and for all. Along with you. Samantha stared down the barrel of the gun, a strange peace settling over her. So this was how it ended. Not with a bang, but with a whimper. Not with a fight, but with a surrender. But then, she thought of Lucia, of the woman whose love had been so strong, so all-consuming, it had driven her to defy the devil himself. She thought of her mother, of the strength and grace she had shown in the face of Edward's cruelty, his indifference. She thought of Vivian, of the quiet, enduring love she had shown Samantha, even in the darkest of times. And she knew, with a certainty that rang through her like a bell, that she would not go gently into that good night. She would not let this be her end, her legacy. She would fight for herself, for Lila, for every woman who had been broken by the sins of the fathers. Slowly, deliberately, she laid the tiny skeleton at her feet, 
her fingers brushing the christening gown in a silent promise. Then she stood, squaring her shoulders, meeting Liam's gaze with a fire that burned away the last of her fear, her doubt. No, she said, her voice ringing out clear and strong in the morning air. This ends now, Liam. But not the way you think. She took a step forward, then another, until she was standing toe-to-toe -to -toe with her stepbrother, the muzzle of the gun cold against her sternum. You're right, she said softly. There is a poison in our blood, a darkness that goes back generations. But it doesn't come from Lucia or her child. She looked up at him, her eyes blazing. It comes from you, from Dad, from every man in this godforsaken family who thought he could bully and brutalize his way to power, to control. Liam's face twisted, rage and something like fear sparking in his eyes. Shut up, he hissed. Shut up, or I swear to God I'll wee you. You'll what? Samantha cut him off, her voice like a whip crack. You'll kill me? Bury me in the dark, like Dad buried Lila? Like he buried the truth of what he was, what he did? She shook her head, a laugh bubbling up in her throat, sharp and mirthless. You can't bury the truth, Liam. It always comes out. It always finds a way. She leaned in closer, until her forehead was almost touching his, the gun digging into her flesh. And the truth is, you're just like him. A weak, frightened little boy, so terrified of his own inadequacy, his own impotence, he has to destroy everything around him just to feel powerful. Liam's hand shook on the gun, his finger tightening on the trigger. I'm warning you, Samantha. But she was beyond warning, beyond fear. Go ahead then, she whispered. Do it. Finish what Dad started. But know this. She smiled, a fierce, feral thing. I'll haunt you. Just like Lucia haunted him. Just like Lila will haunt you for the rest of your miserable life. You'll never be free of us, Liam. We are the ghosts you'll never escape. For a long, taut moment, they stared at each other the air between them crackling with a lifetime's worth of hatred, of resentment, of twisted, poisonous love. And then, with a sound like a wounded animal, Liam lowered the gun. Damn you, he whispered, tears streaking his face. Damn you, Samantha. And then, he was gone, fleeing into the morning mist like the devil himself was on his heels. Samantha stood there, shaking, as Vivian's arms came around her, holding her up, holding her together. Together, they sank to the ground, cradling the tiny skeleton between them. It's over, Vivian murmured, stroking Samantha's hair. It's done. But even as the words left her lips, Samantha knew it wasn't true. This was not the end, but the beginning. The beginning of a new life, a new legacy. One not built on secrets and lies and the sins of the fathers, but on truth, on strength on the unbreakable bonds of mothers and daughters. Somewhere in the distance, a raven cawed, the sound echoing through the graveyard like a promise, like a new dawn rising from the ashes of the old.